If you want to get into sim drifting, you've got a big decision to make. Which wheels should you buy, and how strong should it be to ensure that you get a realistic driving experience and don't regret your purchase? In the past few years, there's been an explosion of new wheels hitting the market because smaller companies saw an opportunity to offer high-performance, direct-drive wheels at an affordable price targeted to beginners on a budget. Now this is great news for anyone who wants to get into the world of driving simulators, but it also makes it hard to know if you're picking the right wheel. Did you know that there are over 25 different ones on the market today, with force feedback ranging from 2 to over 30 newton meters? For sim drifting, force feedback is the key to a good experience. If you don't have enough of it, your wheel will struggle to self-steer like a real car, and you'll probably decide sim drifting isn't for you, missing out on the best, most affordable way to avoid all the beginner mistakes guys like me had to learn the hard way when we couldn't just hit a reset button. On the other hand, while too much force feedback isn't a problem, it does raise the cost, and if drifting is your focus, you don't want to pay for wheel strength that you don't need. And that's where I come in. I started sim drifting 5 years ago, and I've been drifting real cars for over 15 years. I've driven the gear, belt, and direct drive wheelbases, and I bought my current wheel with the goal of simulating any drift car you can imagine, and even do traditional grip racing. My wheel can output up to 20 newton meters of force, and in this video I'll drive it at different strength levels to show what sort of experience you'll get from wheels on the market ranging from 2 to 20 newton meters. I'll also explain what your wheel must do for realistic drifting, what force feedback strength is needed to do it, and how much you'll have to spend to get a wheel that will keep a smile on your face for tandem sessions for years to come. Compared to real cars, the biggest drawback of driving sim is that there's no feeling of weight shifting around the car, pushing you back into your seat when you accelerate, pitching forward under braking and leaning to the outside in corners. In a sense, it's like driving in outer space. Now, both real and sim cars do give feedback through the steering wheel, but at most, sim drifters get about half as much information as you get from feeling the balance and poise of a real car through g-forces. And this is why the wheelbase is such an important aspect of the sim drift experience. It is your lifeline to sensing the sim car's attitude, so you can predict the amount, strength, and timing of your inputs to make the car handle how you want it to. For sim drifting, your wheelbase needs to have enough strength, measured in newton meters of torque, to accelerate the steering wheel to where it needs to be fast enough that it feels realistic. Put simply, it needs to be able to spin fast. This is a drift-specific concern, because grip drivers typically use smooth and slow inputs and never intend to drive in a way that requires much counter-steer. As a result, the average grip driver isn't concerned with how fast the wheel can spin from lock to lock, while that's a key to a good drift wheel. Additionally, since style is a big thing for drifters, your wheelbase needs to be strong enough to spin a custom rim. This especially impacts the smallest gear and belt drive units, which tend to come with lighter, smaller, plastic rims that conceal the weaker motors responsible for their cheaper price. Most aftermarket rims are heavier, made out of metal, and their larger diameter makes the force feedback feel weaker on an underpowered wheelbase. So, we need quick enough self-steer to rotate a custom steering wheel from lock to lock, let's say 900 degrees, as fast as a real car can, in order to get a realistic sim drifting experience. Now we're ready to use my 20 newton meter wheel at different strength levels to learn how much force feedback isn't enough, how much is overkill, and finally home in on that sweet spot. But first, I need to thank the sponsor of the Driftology research we're about to conduct, and that's HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. If you're like me, you work hard and play hard. I've been known to get so focused on sim drifting or editing videos or tuning my car in the garage that my wife has to remind me to take a break and eat. When I do, I stare blankly into the fridge for a few seconds, wondering what I should make, and then I realize I'm kind of stuck. To make a meal I'd be excited about eating, I'd have to research recipes, write down ingredients, stock the fridge, and then I could cut them to size and get started. And for me, that's a heavy lift because I'm an expert at cooking tires in my drift car, not cooking dinners. And even though I love a good meal, more often than I'd like to admit, when I get busy, it turns into a peanut butter and jelly night. That's where HelloFresh comes in, offering a great variety of chef-crafted recipes, so you can pick what you want, whether that's low-calorie or high-protein options, quick and easy meals you can get ready in just 20 minutes, and more. 
Pick what you want each week and HelloFresh handles all the prep work, gathering fresh ingredients in the correct portion sizes for each meal, delivering them right to your door with clear-cut instructions on how to cook them. That way you can enjoy healthy, restaurant-quality meals and get your feet wet with cooking without the stress of going it alone. And now, when you try HelloFresh, you'll get a free dessert with every delivery. Click the link in the description or use my code and get 16 free meals and free dessert for life while your subscription is active. And now, let's start testing sim wheel force feedback, beginning with two Newton meters, which is how much the classic and popular gear drive options have, like the Logitech G920 or the Thrustmaster TMX. To keep these tests the same, we'll use the World Drift Tour Street Pack 180SX car for each force feedback level, but I'll change up the tracks as we go, so maybe you'll find a new favorite drift spot. We'll start out at the Brooklyn Park track, a fictional circuit created by my buddy and fellow video creator, C. Toretto. I'm gonna do an entry here, and I want you to watch and see if you can notice anything about how the wheel behaves, all right? We'll just do a simple e-brake entry, here we go. In a real drift car, when you initiate, you can release the wheel as soon as the car begins to slip out sideways and it will self-steer to stabilize into a drift. But right away, we can see that with just two Newton meters of force feedback, the wheel is slow to come around, which makes initiations much more difficult and awkward than they are in real life. Initiations are a little tricky and not confidence inspiring because sometimes the wheel doesn't come around quick enough. The direct drive I'm using for this example has no resistance, unlike a gear drive motor. So in a way, the gear experience will be even worse. The only benefit is that the gear drive wheelbase will have a tiny and light plastic rim, so it will have more leverage over you and feel stronger than it does on my setup. Either way though, you'll have to overpower the motor to turn it faster to keep from spinning out, which is a con. Mid-corner, the wheel is fairly numb, and it's hard to know from the feedback whether the car is gaining angle or losing it, or even starting to understeer. You have to rely on your visual cues even more than you normally do to know what's happening with the car. Transitions have the same problem, but it's amplified even more because now the wheel has to spin twice as far, instead of going from center to lock, it has to go from lock to lock in the opposite direction. I feel like it's honestly about 50-50 as to whether I'll spin or not, and I'm sure that at 900 degrees of rotation, the wheel wouldn't keep up with aggressive transitions very well. There's just not much driver confidence here for me. I wouldn't trust the car or my skills very much if I was practicing with this level of force feedback. Drifting a real car has much faster self-steer and clearer information coming through vibrations in the steering wheel, which lets you build confidence, drive harder, and all that combines into you learning more. If you ask me, two Newton meters is just not enough steering force to be realistic, so let's up it to the next level of wheels on the market. The next tier you'll find are four, five, and six Newton meter wheels. In this category are belt drive options like the Thrustmaster T300 and RS coming in at four Newton meters, direct drive wheels like the Camus C5, Fanatic CSL DD, and Moza R5 coming in at five Newton meters, and back to Thrustmaster's high-end belt drives like the TSPC and XW with six. We'll demo these at Sportsland Yamanashi, a real drift track about two train stations away from where I used to live in Japan. We got twice the force feedback now. And just watch my hands on the wheel. If you watch a driver's hands, you can tell how composed they're feeling and how confidently they're predicting what the car is going to be able to do. So we'll just do an entry and start driving. See if you notice anything different. At four Newton meters, entries are much improved, and I don't have many worries about the wheel being too slow. I can still overdo it though, and I'm slightly on alert during big entries, and wish I had a bit more info coming in through the steering wheel. Mid-corner, the wheel still feels fairly numb, but it's well over two times better than driving with just two Newton meters from our previous category. I have to pay close attention and adjust my inputs a little bit more frequently, but it's doable. Transitions start to shape up at this range too, and by six Newton meters, they're pretty solid. I would say four Newton meters is the bare minimum for an acceptable experience, and six is decent. 
At this point, we've left belt drive wheels behind and are firmly in the territory of direct drive technology. This is the beginning of the big leagues. In this category, you'll find the Logitech Pro, the Thrustmaster T818, the Fanatic CSL DD with the Boost Kit and Club Sport DD, the Moza R9 and 12, the Camus C12, and the Simmagic Alpha Mini. You've got an offering from almost every major player in the game. We'll demo these at Speed Sports Racing Park, a real track in Texas that my buddies in Lone Star Drift run. We'll just start right here. Now we're talking, eight newton meters actually feels about the closest to the many real drift cars I've driven. 10 is also pretty good because even though it's stronger than real life, it makes up for that lack of g-forces that you'd be feeling in a real car, which help predict when the car is going to transition. Personally, in tandem, I like to use between 10 and 12 most often, whereas solo, I can rock eight newton meters just fine. At 10, and definitely at 12 newton meters, making steering corrections mid-drift, not during a transition, is actually noticeably harder than in a real car. But it's not too tiring, and I don't think it'll give you any bad habits if you were to transition that skill to real life drifting. Honestly, everything is good here, and confidence inspiring across the board. Pleasantly, nothing is distracting either. At 15 to 20 newton meters and higher, we are looking at the juggernauts of the sim racing world. These are serious pieces of machinery and the reason that emergency stop buttons exist. At full power, wheels like this can catch you off guard and cause minor injuries if your fingers are in the wrong place at the wrong time. At this tier, you'll find wheels like the Fnatic DD Plus, Podium DD1 and 2, the Camus DDWB, Moza R16 and 21, the Symagic Alpha U, my BRS Direct Force Pro that's on my rig, and we finally begin seeing what I consider the top of the line, offerings by Simucube with their 2 Sport, 2 Pro, and the Simucube 2 Ultimate. We'll demo these at Tikimaki Koovala, a real drift track located in Finland that I may not have pronounced correctly. That's going to give us 15 newton meters out of the wheel. And again, just take a look at how the wheel moves. Watch my hands on the wheel. This force feedback strength is too much and actively distracts me from my best driving. In the last test, I felt smooth and in effortless control, but at this level, I'm on alert and it feels more like I'm trying to rein the car in and fight it through the turns rather than working together as one. It forces me to pay more attention to my throttle steering too, because making mid-corner corrections is a real workout, and it would tire me out over a longer session. Real drift cars, they feel nothing like this, unless maybe their power steering system were to break mid-run. Oh man, that is quite a workout. Let's do our final test here. We're going to all tap over. Crank it all the way up, 100%. 20 newton meters. Keep an eye on my pedals. I'm gonna try and throttle steer this so that I don't actually have to muscle the wheel around too much once I get this stable here. Because this is a fair bit to work with. In my opinion, drifting on full power with these wheels would train you to be far rougher with your steering inputs than necessary. In a real car, you'll be able to steer not from the shoulders and biceps, but from the elbows and from the wrists. And you should, because this more gentle approach enables you to pick up on more detailed information coming through the steering wheel when you aren't muscling it around. And higher quality information leads to higher quality driving. Now that we've tested force feedback strengths covering most wheelbases on the market, we can look at what you should actually consider buying, whether you're just getting started or upgrading your sim rig to the next level. These are my recommendations from years of experience drifting both real and sim cars, and what advice I'd give to my past self if I was just starting out with sim drifting. Coming in at two to three hundred dollars, I recommend you avoid the two newton meter gear drive offerings. I'd only go with these if you live in a country where it's simply not possible to get a stronger belt or direct drive wheel. Otherwise, I'd keep saving my money. Even if it delayed my purchase by a whole year, I still think it would be worth it to get a stronger wheel. 
If you are budget limited, aim for the four to six Newton meter range, which will put you in the $250 to $400 territory. In this tier, I prefer the direct drives at five Newton meters, or the stronger Thrustmaster belt drives, their TSPC, GT, or XW, depending on what platforms you need it to work with. You can be happy with these wheels for years, though you may want to upgrade eventually. If you have enough budget to aim for a forever purchase and your focus is drifting, where you don't want to waste money on force feedback strength that you won't use, the 8 to 12 Newton meter range is your market. Prices here range from $450 to $1,000. Here there are all kinds of options, and I don't see myself ever wanting to use more than this level of power output for sim drifting. In the future, I do want to do project reviews for wheels in this category, but honestly any of the options on the market will be a good choice and you'll never need to upgrade. Now, if you're a serious sim racer who also wants to simulate more than just drifting, consider the 15 to 20 newton meter category. There is a real premium to pay with prices here though, ranging from $700 to over $2,000. You get tons of flexibility though, because you can turn the wheel strength down to get behavior just like any of the previous categories I've shown, and have headroom to turn the wheel strength up to simulate all kinds of grip racing scenarios as well. Finally, I won't leave out my buddies playing on console. For you all, everything I've covered before applies, but your brand choice also matters due to platform compatibility. For console, the cheapest wheels you'll want to consider are the Thrustmaster T300RS or TXRW. Your cheapest direct drive option is the Fnatic CSL DD or GT DD Pro. These are both the same wheels, but one is compatible with PC and PlayStation, while the other is compatible with PC and Xbox. If you want to go top tier, you're looking for the Logitech Pro, Fnatic Club Sport, or Podium direct drive wheels. Now you've got a comprehensive understanding of force feedback as it relates to sim drifting, and you're ready to start your sim journey or take it to the next level. But, you know what they say, you can buy the best parts, but you can't buy skill. And that's why you need this video, where I reveal my process to learn how to sim drift without spinning out, showing you how to control your car through the three phases of drifting, and how to adjust your technique if you find yourself accidentally gripping up or spinning out. Click through, and I'll see you there.